This is called time blending. We do have a sunset image combined with different exposures shot during the night to add these car light trails on top. So let me show you how we can create this effect using different exposures, editing them in Lightroom and combining them in Photoshop. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's start. So this right here will be our base image. This was shot right at sunset. And to get this effect right, it's vital to shoot your images from a tripod and don't move your tripod during this process. And half an hour later, I shot these images to capture these car light trails as a long exposure from the exact same position using a tripod. These images will have different settings since a sunset shot needs different editing than these car light trails. Let's start with the base image. I want this photo to be warm and vibrant and bright. So what I'm doing first is I'm changing the profile to the landscape, giving it some more saturation. Then let's go right ahead and work on the white balance. I'm going to bring up the tint, introducing more warmth and make it look more like a sunset image with all these warmer color tones added. We can further improve this effect by slightly bringing up the tint which adds some really nice magentas overall. And then let's work on the exposure. As I said, I want this base image to be rather bright. So I want to start this by slightly bumping up the exposure. At the same time, the sky is a little blown out, which really doesn't look good to me. So I want to bring down the highlights, which should nicely fix that. Now we can actually see the horizon on the ocean. And I also want to bring down the shadows, which helps to add contrast to the image. At the same time, let's bring up the whites for more contrast. And I do think we can bring up the blacks. This does reduce the contrast a little bit, but it also helps to create a soft look, which I think works great. Also, we are preventing underexposure, raising the blacks like this. I also want this image to have a lot of sharpness. So I'm going to bring up the texture and to add a little bit of glow on top, I'm going to drop the clarity and I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Perfect. Now exposure wise, I'm quite happy with the basic adjustments. All I want to do now is to bring up the vibrance since I want this image to be well saturated, just like this. Okay. Now that we have the base adjustments out of the way, let's also apply a little bit of masking. And there's not much going on. I want to start this using a radial gradient covering the horizon like this. And I'm making sure the center point of the radial gradient lies outside of the image. What I want to do here is to create some kind of glow effect. And to make it look more natural, it's important the center is outside the image. So to create the glow effect, I'm raising the blacks and I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Be very careful with the dehaze since this will affect the brightness and we don't want to overexpose that area too badly. But that looks great. If you want, you can also add some temperature to just add some more warmth to this area. But I think for me, that looks fine like it is now. In fact, I do want to add temperature, but in a different way. So let me create a sky selection. This is looking pretty good. We do have the ocean selected as well, but that's actually what I want. However, I do want to adjust this mask a little more by subtracting a linear gradient, taking away the top part of this mask like this. And now what I want to do in here is to bring up the temperature. And I'm also going to bring up the tint just to give the sky some stronger sunset colors. Perfect. Then let's add one more linear gradient for the very top like this. And I'm just going to bring down the exposure a little bit, adding some darkness to the top of the sky. That looks wonderful. Now that's already it for the masking. I can deactivate it real quick so we can see the difference from before to after. We added a little bit of glow and some more darkness and on top of the sky. Besides that, not much has changed. I do also want to add a little bit of color grading. So let's head out of the basic tab and go straight into the color mixer. 
I basically want to bring up all the warmer color tones. So let's start with the red saturation. Continue with orange, yellow. And I do want to bring up purple. And I also want to bring up magenta since we do have these two color tones right here on the right side of the sky. I think I also want to bring up the blue tones just a bit to give the sky some more saturation overall. All right, so that's looking great. We can also apply some split toning to further improve the sunset colors. So in the color grading panel, I'm going to start with the highlights. And since we want to make the sunset colors more intense, we're going to set up the hue to something very warm. So somewhere in the orange range. And now let's pump up the saturation. This works really well for this image. I also want to go into the midtones and apply a warm hue to further boost this effect. Just around here, bring up the saturation. I'm not going as high as with the highlights, but I do push the saturation a bit. Okay, now we want to have a little bit of color contrast using the shadows. We're going to apply a cold hue here and also bring up the saturation a notch. So this adds some very nice balance between the warmer and the colder tones of the image. Okay, I'm quite happy with the colors. There's just one more thing I need to do in the calibration tab. Here again, I'm just bringing up the saturation of all these three colors. Let's start with red. And I'm going to increase the, the green ones and the blue ones. We could also bring down the blue primary hue, making the sunset a little more interesting this way. All right, that looks awesome. So that's pretty much it for the base image. Of course, we also want to sharpen it a bit. So I'm going to head into the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and I'm going to increase the amount of sharpening. Done. As you can see, the editing for the base image in Lightroom was really, really simple. We can take a look at before. You can see we made the sunset colors way more intense. We did brighten up the whole image, especially in the shadows, so we can see a few things. And the next step would be to edit our car light trail images. So usually when I'm editing multiple images, like for focus stacking, we want to have the same settings on each raw file. This time, however, we want to have different settings for the sunset image and for the nighttime images. So let's start with some basic editing for these shots. I'm going to head into the basic tab and there's not much going on. What's important is I want to change the white balance again, bringing up the temperature. And what this does is it will make the whole image warmer, including those car light trails. That means if a car comes along with bright white lights, these will appear a little more yellowish. So right around here looks good. I want to bring up the exposure. And as I do these adjustments, I'm just focusing on the car lights. So if the sky is blowing out, that doesn't matter much. I want these car light traits to be nice and bright, which will make it easier later to combine the images. We can make them more interesting by adding clarity. And I do want to bring down the dehaze, which will add some very cool glow effect around those car light trails. And of course, I also want to bring up the vibrance and the saturation to boost the colors of the lights. We can even go down into the color mixer and just bring up the saturation of red, orange, and yellow. And that's pretty much the editing involved in these car light images. So now we need to synchronize those shots. Go ahead, select the images, and now hit synchronize. Make sure to check all and again hit the synchronize button. Now, just to be safe, I want to take a look at each of these images. Some car lights are a little brighter, so we want to manually adjust that, like here in this case. What we want to do here is to bring down the exposure and we want to bring down the highlights so we can actually have some details in those lights. This one is a little too bright as well. So again, I'm bringing down the exposure and the highlights. Just like this. This looks great. And, and that's all the editing done in Lightroom. What we need to do next is merging all the images in Photoshop. So again, we want to select everything. This time, including our sunset image. Right click, 
choose edit in and then we are going down to the option open as layers in Photoshop. Now what Lightroom's open as layers function does is it opens all the images in one single Photoshop file. So you don't have to copy all the images around. You can start working right away. And what we want to do here is we want to bring down the base image to the bottom of the layer menu. Then let's deactivate all the other layers for a moment. And I do want to clean up the shot. There are a lot of people and cars around which I want to remove. So I'm going to duplicate the layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. And now let's zoom in a bit. And I'm going to make use of the remove tool. And I'm just roughly selecting the stuff I want to get rid of. As you can see, the remove tool works like magic for things like that. So now that we have cleaned up the image, we can actually start merging the remaining images. Let's start with this one. As you can see, since I was using a tripod, these are perfectly aligned. And this is really, really, really important. Now, how do we combine these two? This is also really simple. You just need to change the blending mode. Go into the blending mode menu. And here we want to choose lighten. And just like that, we have blended those two images together. Changing the blending mode might look good at first. However, if you take a closer look in the sky, you can see there are things changing and we need to prevent that. So my way of approaching that is I'm going to apply a black layer mask on the car light layer. I'm holding down the alt key for that and click on the layer mask icon, which will instantly create a black layer mask. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to white, and adjust the brush size a little bit, make it a little softer. And what I'm doing now is I'm just brushing along the road on the layer mask with a white brush to reveal the car lights. This way we eliminate any distracting light on the mountainsides or in the sky. And if you are not sure if you got every light correctly, you can always hold down the shift key while clicking on the layer mask to see the spots which you missed by deactivating the layer mask. This looks pretty good. I don't want the light on in these rock faces because to me it looks kind of distracting. So let's continue. Let's activate the next layer. And again, we want to change the blending mode to lighten. And again, we want to apply a black layer mask. Grab the brush and start painting in again. Perfect. Here it's clearly visible why the layer mask helps additionally, since we do have some ugly light on this rock right here, which we don't have in the final image since we have masked it out. And I want to continue with the next one. Again, change the blending mode, create a layer mask, and brush over the road. Of course, stacking that many car lights is not necessary. You can also just use one. However, I have a feeling it looks cooler with more of these car lights applied on top of each other. Just like that. Now you can also see there's some car lights right down here in the corner. I'm not going to mask them in because they are more distracting than they are adding something to the image because it's just too tiny. So I'm not going to use them. And here we are with the final layer. Let's activate it change the blending mode to lighten, create a layer mask and start brushing. All right, and that's how we are doing time blending using a bit of Lightroom editing and a little bit of Photoshop editing. Of course, you can use this technique for different situations, not only roads like this, but cityscapes or whatever you want. Everything that involves artificial light sources is a very great start to practice this technique. Let me know if you have any further tips or have any questions about the editing and thank you so much for watching this video.